in any war, women, children and the elderly are the most vulnerable segments of the population. The one who has a weapon in their hands has full power over them and can do whatever they please. World War II became a real nightmare for the civilian population, when the descendants of the greatest scientists, composers and philosophers committed such terrible atrocities that it defies any normal explanation, much less understanding. The fate of women in German-occupied territories depended entirely on the plans of the German command. Hijacking in Germany No matter how creepy it sounds, perhaps the most humane was the hijacking to Germany for work. In order to free men of military age and German women from work for service in the auxiliary units of the Wehrmacht, the Germans actively exported free labor from the occupied territories. Of course, this applied not only to women, but it was women who were taken out the most. These workers were distributed among peasant farms, plants and factories, where they were in fact as slaves. Potential Germans also, the women of the occupied territories, who outwardly met the requirements of the Aryan race, that is, were fair-haired, blue-eyed, and had European facial features, were the result of Himmler's insane experiment on the so-called racial and cultural assimilation of the racially valuable girls. As a rule, this mostly concerned the inhabitants of Poland, as well as the Scandinavian countries. According to the logic of the SS chief, the so-called re-Germanization program allowed the carriers of the so-called last German blood to return to their native harbor. The essence of the program was to deport the most suitable girls to Germany, where they were assigned to German families as servants, nurses and housekeepers. At the same time, the girls needed to completely change their documents. It was supposed that in this way, the carriers of this last blood could eventually become real Germans and give birth to racially full-fledged children for the needs of the Reich. According to some reports, at least 7,000 girls were taken out of Poland only under the re-Germanization program. The total number is not precisely established. At the same time, future German women did not have the right to complain in letters to their homeland. They were obliged to write only good news. But in fact, many repatriates fell into depression. Some went crazy or even tried to commit suicide. The reason was the attitude toward girls on the part of the Germans themselves, who considered girls to be second-class people, frankly despised them, often using physical violence. Many repatriates openly declared that it was better to be a prisoner than a pseudo-German. So one of the girls, Evgenia Wojciech, wrote, I'm ready to work in a factory like a Polish woman and live in a camp than to be a German and a servant. Service personnel. In the occupied territories, the Nazi hired girls and women as waitresses, cooks, cleaners, etc. But there were also other not the most pleasant works, namely the sexual satisfaction of the occupiers. It is no secret that both in Europe and on the territory of the Soviet Union, the Nazis created entire networks of brothels, in which they were often not invited but forced to work. And the girls had no choice. The Germans set a condition, either a brothel or a death of a family or something similar. Many women were involuntarily scorned and ostracized. But few tried to figure out if they really wanted to do it voluntarily. Experimental material. The women and girls of the occupied territories were also, no matter how cynical it sounds, experimental material for the wildest and most terrible studies of Hitler's pseudomedics. So, in the Ravensburg concentration camp, experiments on the organ transplantation and a variety of medical tests were carried out on girls and women. It was assumed that if successful, the German soldiers would become stronger. Particularly monstrous were the sterilization experiments, the purpose of which was to create a labor force incapable of reproduction. More than 1,000 unfortunate prisoners from Poland, France, Norway and other countries did not survive the operating tables or died from terrible, unsanitary conditions. When the number of prisoners began to grow at a tremendous speed, the survivors of the experiments were simply shot as waste material. And if at first the doctors of the concentration camps 
tried to comply with at least some norms, then they simply gave up on it. As one of the prisoners recalled, I was lucky. We were operated on at the very beginning. Clean bandages were used. When operations were in full swing, nobody followed sanitation. Bandages were used many times, and as a result people developed infections. Many hundreds of pregnant women from Europe and the USSR were taken by the Nazis to the special concentration camp Detrushikov, which was created in Czechoslovakia near the town of Moravska Trebova. Experiments were carried out on pregnant women and newborns. Only indirect data shows what kind of experiments were carried out. There were the so-called experiments on non-lethal termination of pregnancy. Moreover, the experiments were set regardless of the period of pregnancy. The unfortunate women either died in terrible agony or committed suicide, unable to bear the torture. Captured Women Soldiers To a greater extent, this concerned women and girls who served in the Red Army. Back in June 1941, Van Kluge, commander of the 4th Field Army, ordered that all Soviet women in uniform be shot without pity. Surprisingly, already on July 1st, the high command of the Wehrmacht ground forces put Van Kluge on his place, cancelling this order. Even for the Nazis, it turned out to be too much. True, the cancellation of the order did not affect the attitude towards women and girls prisoners of war. At best, they were simply shot. So, during the exhumation of the graves of the dead, many bodies of doctors and nurses were found who were shot, having previously been subjected to inhumane torture. For example, the Nazis stripped the unknown captive girl nurse naked, cut her face with a knife, cut off her chest, and then dragged her onto the road and shot her. Many captured female soldiers were immediately raped by the Germans. There is a case when one unfortunate woman was raped by almost a company of soldiers. If after that the prisoner remained alive, she was shot. Moreover, women were not left alone even after death. So Hans Ruthoff, a soldier of the Wehrmacht, wrote in his diary, They were nurses on the roads. They were shot and thrown on the road. On these dead bodies, obscene inscriptions were written. Those female prisoners who were not tortured or shot ended up in concentration camps, where they were abused hundreds and thousands of times more terrible than male prisoners. So, in the Stalag 337, women were impaled, given animals with spices, usually pepper, to burn their insides. Women were subjected to additional bullying by German guards, who were very inventive. So, in Stalag 337, the woman commandant of the women's barracks received the nickname Cannibal. The fate of civilian women. What the Nazis did with the civilian population, today many refuse to consider the truth. However, it is well known fact that only on the territory of the occupied Soviet Union the Germans left behind at least a million children of offspring. Women and girls could be subjected to violence at any moment. And nothing stopped the Germans. So, in the village of Trosna, Kursk region, a group of girls were driven into a barn. The next day, they were to be sent to work in Germany. At night, an infantry unit of the Wehrmacht passed by the barn. The soldiers broke into the room and raped all the girls. On November 14, 1942, this was even officially stated in the summary of the Soviet Information Bureau. Not only soldiers, but also officers behaved like beasts. In the village of Pesky, a German officer wanted to rape a young girl. Her father hid his daughter from the rapist. The man was shot, and his house was burned down. And even violence, which it would seem should have stopped the Nazis, often ended terribly. So a 19-year-old girl first was raped, and after that she was shot. Fifteen teenage girls were driven to school near Kiev. The unfortunate were brutally raped and then hung from lampposts along the street. German soldiers themselves spoke about the facts of constant violence and atrocities against women and girls. So Chief Corporal Gustav Lanz, after he was captured, said, In Rzhevka I saw 15 burned corpses of local residents. Among the tortured were old men, women and children. In one house of the outskirts of the village, six dead women lay. The soldiers abused them and then strangled them. There are hundreds and thousands of such testimonies. Poland, Czechoslovakia, Denmark, 
Norway and Greece and so on. Everywhere, the Nazi army reveled in its power over defenseless people who could not offer any resistance. 